All right, so we're going to look at a specific example uh, in which we used the Beelzebub Bart law. Um, kind of a tough one. It's, I know this is intimidating at first to use the Beelzebub Bart law. Um, so my goal here is to try to show you some strategies to make it a little bit easier to use. Um, so what we've got here is a current carrying wire, and we're supposed to find the magnetic field made by this wire um, at a distance A above the wire. So we're just calculating the field caused by a long straight wire. Um, so first move is, well, let's actually put down the Beelzebub Bart law. So deep breath and we'll put it down. So dB is mu naught over four pi of I D L cross R vector all over R cubed. So what I recommend or what really helps with this is to just, just be disciplined and go bit by bit to, to identify what each little part is. Okay, so um, IDLs, these little, these are little chunks of current that are causing the field in the first place. Okay, so um, you could really pick anywhere along the wire. I'm, I'm going to pick uh, this little piece right here. So here's a little piece of the wire that's carrying current. Um, so here's my little IDL. Um, so here is one of the infinite little pieces of the wire that's going to generate fields up here. Um, so there's my IDL. Uh, our vector always goes from the cause to the effect. So the cause of the field are these IDLs, and then the field itself is the effect. So here's the cause, and the vector from the cause to the effect is the R vector. Uh, so I'm gonna draw it that way. There's the R vector. So there's the little part. And then um, just to anticipate a little bit, although we'll see this show up in a moment, is uh, if you're good at cross products, for instance, you could see that DL folded into R hat or R vector comes out. So that the field that's gonna be generated here is gonna come out. Um, as a matter of fact, anywhere along this wire, uh, over here, DL would be this way, and R hat would be like this. So DL folded into R would come out, and that's true everywhere along the wire. You may have even seen in your physics class the right-hand rule that just says if you have a long wire, grab the wire with your thumb in the direction of the current, and the field will wrap around so it would come out up at the top. So you can kind of see that coming. Um, what we're going to do, though, is... is uh, just look at how this cross product plays out if you um, if you just write down the components of each vector. So um, DL itself, if you just look at the vector, it's going in the x direction. Um, so what I'm going to do is just put it down as a as a three component like vector. So it's got length DL. Um, it has no y component and it has no z component. So there's DL vector. Um, the R vector is shown. So let's take a look at that. Um, it goes, well, back to the back this way. Um, I'm gonna define an angle here just so I can kind of say how far back I go this way. Um, so it looks like that's gonna be like um, minus r sine theta. I called it minus because it's going like back this way. I'm gonna have my coordinates set up like this. X, Y, and then Z would be out. Um, so. So this component is going to be minus r sine theta. The y component is, um, you could say r cos theta, but even better is just call it a, because it's, it's a given constant in the problem. So just say this goes up by a. Uh, and then it doesn't come out of the board or into the board, so it doesn't have a z component. Um, so there's dl and r. And so what we can then do is let's take the cross product of these things and we can, um, we can get rid of, um, well, get rid of the cross product and possibly simplify this. So let's go DL cross R vector is, hope you remember you do uh, IJK, your unit vectors across the top. Uh, what do we got? DL, zero, zero. The order matters, so be careful that it is DL cross R minus R sine theta A, zero equals. Um, just checking that the video is still running. So then what we want to do is, well, let's go for it. So the i hat component, right, cover the row in the column, it would be zero times zero plus zero. Um, so nothing going on there. J hat component, dl times zero um, and uh, minus and minus r sine theta times zero. So no components going on there. Now let's do the k hat component. 
you notice you get A, D, L, K, F. Now you probably saw that coming if you were already good at cross products. Uh, here's a couple ways to see it. Um, first of all, you realize when you take cross products that only the part of uh, a vector that's perpendicular to the other even matters. So you have DL vector, and then the only part that's perpendicular, the only part of R that's perpendicular to DL is this guy that goes, this component that goes up of length A. So that's why the cross product of DL and R vector is just DLA. And then why does it come out of the page? Well, DL vector folded into R vector comes out. So it's ADLK hat. Also, we just got rid of the cross product, so let's put that in there. So you get uh, DB. Oh, and by the way, all these DL cross R hats then come out of the page. So what we just learned is really what we're adding up are a bunch of Z components then. So no matter where you are on this wire, DL folded into R hat points in the Z hat direction, or, or K hat, I should say. Um, so they're all little DBZs. So you get mu naught over 4 pi um, I times, now this became ADL. And then this, uh, and then this is still R, so R cubed. Okay. When you get to this stage, you have choices. You, the, the issue we have at the moment then is so um, now we've got everything written um, uh, in terms of, well, it's, it's all contributions to uh, fields that come out. So in principle, we're ready to integrate. The problem is that there's like too many variables. Um, L is a variable that would kind of like run along here. And so it's going to like continuously change as we go to sum things up. And then R vector or this value of R is going to change as we move. So we've kind of got too much going on here. Um, so you have choices. You could rewrite everything in terms of R variable. You could rewrite everything in terms of L. Um, what I'm going to do just from experience, it ends up making a relatively easy um, integral to, to solve is I'm going to write everything in terms of theta. Um, so you're just going to do it that way. Um, so let's play around with this a little bit. So DL, um, we want to figure out a little wiggle in here how that's related to theta. Right, well, so if this full distance here is like L, and then a little wiggle in it is DL, um, let's figure out how to write that guy in terms of theta. Well, L, if you look, if you look, at, uh, if you look at L and look at theta, um, what we want to do is try to write this in terms of a constant and the angle. And so what you can see is that tan theta would be opposite over adjacent, or L over A. Um, so L over A equals tan theta. So what that means is L is A tan theta, right? Because L over A would be tan theta. Well, what that means then is DL would be A secant squared theta. Okay. Um, otherwise known as uh, one over cosine squared. So you could say it's A, oops, I forgot D theta. Um, that would be um, a over cosine squared d theta. Right, so there's dl. Now let's work on the, the r, the value of r. Again, it's nice if we can invoke a. So we know that r cosine theta is a, right? Because r is the hypotenuse, r cos theta is a. Um, maybe I'll just write that down to slow things down. So r cos theta equals a. Um, so what that means is r is equal to a over cosine theta. Right. So what we're going to do now is we have an expression for dl, and we have an expression for r, and so we're just going to shove them in there, and then everything will be in terms of theta. So you got dbz equals mu naught over 4 pi uh, i a. Okay. Now let's go for this. DL is A over cosine squared theta d theta. So we got to put that in there. Uh, A over cos squared theta d theta. And then we have a R cubed in the bottom. Well, R cubed is A over cosine theta. Um, so what we need to do is basically turn this upside down and cube it because it's one over R cubed. 
So you will get an A cubed downstairs and a cos cubed upstairs. Right. Uh, we're going to get some spectacular cancellations. So dBz equals, so we get mu naught over 4 pi. Um, let's see, I, we have A times A is A squared over A cubed. So you can get I over A. And then all that's left here is you have cosine cubed over cosine squared. So this going to be cosine theta. Uh, so cosine theta d theta. Um, so that is how big a contribution to the field is from one of these little chunks. And what we need to do is sum the whole thing. Realize if you sum the whole thing, when you're, if you were directly here, your theta would be zero, right? If you're way over here, the theta is pi over two, right? The theta would go here, zero to pi over two. If you go this way, the theta would start going like negative. So if you're out here, this angle would crank to minus like 90 degrees or minus pi over two. So when we finally integrate this thing, which is what we need to do next, is we're gonna integrate both sides. So we need to sum them all up. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna sum them up from minus pi over two to pi over two, right? Um, that will get you the whole wire because all the way out here at infinity, that angle is going to crank out to 90 degrees, pi over two. And if you're at negative infinity, that's going to be minus 90 degrees or minus pi over two. Um, so now let's just finish it up. So we just about have it. So all this junk is constant. So pull it out in front. Um, so finally, you've got. Um, so the, the sum of all the dBZs, um, that is going to be mu naught i over 4 pi a. Pull that in the front. Um, integral of cosine theta, um, well, the, the derivative of sine theta is cosine theta. So this will just integrate up to sine. Um, so you get sine theta evaluated at pi over 2 and minus pi over 2. So you get mu naught i over 4 pi a times, well, sine of pi over 2 is, is 1, and then minus sine of minus pi over 2 is minus 1. So that's going to be 2. And so in all its glory, mu naught i over 2 pi a is the grand total um, z value or of the of the magnetic field so all the field points along z um, again the direction we had already gotten from taking the direction of dl cross r it points in the k hat direction or out of the page and this is the magnitude of that field okay so that's using the beot savart law again the thing that made this one a little bit tough was um many many things were changing right the angles changing the uh, l variables changing as you walk along the wire the value of r is changing um, so this is a tough one. In practice, ones that you will tend to work on in class, um, usually you can find one or two things at least that are staying constant, um, but here pretty much everything was changing. Um.